It's day four on the Disney Dream. Let's go to Mickey's Private Island. Hey there, ma'am, fam. It is our fourth and final day aboard the Disney Dream, and we are at Castaway Key. This is Disney's original private island in the Bahamas, so we are headed out shortly to try a new experience, catch some rays, see the characters in their new costumes, hopefully. So come with us. Yeah, let's go. Our breakfast has arrived. We've picked up a loose assortment of pastries like croissant and toast with some fruit, but the main priority here is coffee. Isn't that right? I need coffee so that I can go to Castaway, which is right there. You can order your breakfast by using one of these hang tags, filling out what you would like from juice to cereals and other pastries and then delivery time for it to arrive. They also have room service available 24 hours a day and that is included with the cost of your cruise. And that room service also includes Mickey bars. Off the ship and look what I see, the cutest little butt. Duck butt. Donald's little duck butt in his new costume. It feels amazing out here. Now when you're getting off, you're going to need your key to the world card, but also bring a photo ID because they may check it on the way back. No need to bring towels off the ship. The cast members will provide them for you when you get off the boat. And they also have um, coolers available for purchase with some bottled beverages, including beer, or if you have a cooler, they can put ice in it. Just met Donald in his new outfit. He is freaking adorable. And now we're on our way towards the main section of the island. I want to stop and admire the painting on the back of the ship itself. There are going to be Disney characters painting every single Disney ship and different characters on each one. This one we have Sorcerer Mickey and his brooms. I know there was a hot debate that Molly and I had about whether these were mops or brooms, but if the Lorcana cards are any sort of lore confirmation, they're brooms. We are headed now to the main part of the island, which is the Scuttles Cove and Family Beach section. This is where you're gonna find the majority of things to do on the island. This is where the main snorkeling is. This is where the stingray experience is. This is where you're gonna find most of the food at Cookies and Cookies 2 Barbecue. You're gonna find the kids area here, the kind of like teen hangout area. They've got sports areas like basketball, bar, lots of snacks merchandise. This is all going to be on this first main strip around the island. Now you can take a tram. It's a little bit closer to the ship or it's about a six minute walk to the main part of the island once you get off. Then once you're there, there's an additional tram adults if you want to go to Serenity Bay, which is the 18 and older section that is exclusive to adults on the island. There you have a private beach, you have another bar, you have your own dining experience, you can rent floats out there. So if you're looking for a more quiet adult only experience, you want to keep going to Serenity Bay and that you are going to have to take a tram. There's no walking all the way there. You can walk to the first part and then take the tram. Or you can rent bikes. Yeah, if you want to bike all the way there, I guess you could do that. That'd we, be fun. We went biking on our last cruise. It went, it went away. It was fun. It was fun. We biked to the observation tower and looked out and saw maybe my favorite Easter egg that's ever been hidden anywhere. <laughs> Disney. What's really interesting about taking the tram to the adult section is that you go basically through Jurassic Park 3, it mm. feels like, uh, minus the dinosaurs. But plus, where Pablo Escobar used to send in and out um, stuff. He would send in and out stuff from his very over-the-table business. I don't... No, it's, it, no, no, that one was under the table. Oh, that one, you know. Don't compare our businesses with the lava to Pablo Escobar. You know, Molly, I've been really trying hard not to. Oh my God, her outfit. Minnie's new outfit is so cute. Oh my God, Alan, they're Espadrilles. What's that? What's an Espadrille? Yeah. What part of Minnie's outfit do you think is an Espadrille? Is it the, is it the belt? No, it's a shoe. 
Oh. It's her shoe. It's mm. the kind of shoe that she has the little like wedge on her oh. shoe. Because she's a stylish lady, but practical because she needs a wedge in the sand. Yeah. I love your new outfit. Oh, oh my god. She looks really hard. You get even the, the espadrilles on. Fashionable and functional. And a bracelet. And your sunglasses. You just look the cutest. Always, always the she most tries fashionable. Best. Oh, thank you. I'll oh, lend you it later. <laughs> How should we pose for our picture, baby? Hold hands. Kisses. Hands together. She's so cute. Thank you, Minnie. You. I love your new outfit. You guys look so cute. Oh, heck yeah. Have you been causing chaos on the island? Just a little bit. I like that about you guys. Yeah, just a little bit. Just a little, you know. So, yeah. <laughs> you got to a little bit. Yeah. Can I see your outfit? You've got a little hat and your life jacket safety first. You've got, oh, you've got water wings. That's, oh, you're a pirate. I love that. <laughs> How should we put? Oh, and you're going to go fishing? Got a lot to do today. <laughs> How should we pose? Right here? Right here? Right here? All right, friends. Two, three. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Chip and Dale. They're little. <laughs> thank you. Oh, you like my outfit? I like your outfit. Oh, you both complimenting each other. That's a nice walk. outfit matches your car. I Is know. that your steamboat on there? I know, oh the original. Gosh. The original. And what do you think of his cap? I like Disney your hat Cruise, Line cruise Line cap. Line hat. You I are know. ready for some fun. Did Minnie oh, make this for you? She's very talented. So talented. And I saw you met Minnie earlier. <laughs> what did. did you think of her dress? Her dress, beautiful, right? What did you think? So you like pretty. Dress? I bet. Oh, I know, they had a special. runway moment. <laughs> and it was absolutely, I know. <laughs> Mickey nearly cried at how gorgeous she looked. Yeah, she's Giving a turn. Uh, <laughs> it was like a Marilyn Monroe oh, moment. I love that for you, too. <laughs> relationship goals, for sure. relationship goals, eternal sweetheart. <laughs> Can we take a picture, Mickey? How's your clothes? Right here? All right. What a gentleman. <laughs> Outfit. Ooh, a little video. Showing it off for everyone. Yeah, He's got the swagger. <laughs> Thank you, Mickey. <laughs> Hi, Goosey. Oh, that's it. Good to see you. I love your new outfit. Oh, I know. You look so stylish. You going fishing later? Bring you Max? Yeah, bring him Max. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's working on school right now. He's got homework. Homework. That's important. That's possible, though. Good parents. Can I see your shoes, Goofy? They have little creatures on them. Oh, my gosh. You got an octopus and a seahorse. Those are lovely. I like those. How should we post for our picture, Goofy? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh, fashion icon. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, Goofy. <laughs> Their outfits are so cute. Freaking adorable. We saw everybody with Daisy and Pluto who are back closer to the ship, but I love their new outfits. They're so bright and colorful. Whose was your favorite? Goofy's. Oh, you like Goofy's? Goofies, and then I think like a close, a close second is going to be Minnie's. With the dress and yeah. the shoes and the espadrilles. Yes, I know what those are now. I, I got to say Chip Thought and... Thought it was a person before. <laughs> I got to say Chip and Dale's that they made themselves with the little hat and then oh, the yeah. terry cloth, like, towel, bandana, and their own little... They're just, they're chaos incarnate, and I love them. But everybody looks so cute. Characters are a fun thing to me, I think, especially on Castaway, because they're outfits. And now we've got a little bit more time before our little excursion, so we're just gonna kind of explore this main area and not wander too far. Probably need to buy something. Probably. Sure. Now this merchandise shop is hilarious, because the name of the shop is She Sells Seashells, crossed out, and everything else. And there is a second merch shop a little bit further down on the island called By the Seashore. So the old tried and true tongue twister she sells she shells by the seashore. It's a mouthful. Now in this merch shop, you can buy a whole host of shirts, tank tops, swimsuits. It should be noted that anything that you find here on Castaway that is branded with Castaway Key, you're not gonna be able to find anywhere else. So if there is an item that you see that catches your eye and that you want, pick it up because you're not going to find it anywhere but in these shops on Castaway Key. This collection seems to be like newer since we've been on the island. And I like that there's a spirit jersey that's like meshy kind of. 
I also really think this crop top's cute. Super light. Ooh, a white tie-dye hoodie. This is the newest collection, I'm pretty sure. Bucket hat, looks like lounge shorts, very fun. Look at these ears that you literally inflate. Like, you literally can blow them up. Those are so fun. Should also note that they have a few items if you forgot something, like sunscreen or goggles, or like a pouch for your phone to do the snorkeling or something. They've got that stuff too. And you can use your key to the world card. You don't need cash or a credit card. I've never noticed this on the island map, but if you look through it, you can see all the characters having fun. Like Goofy's on a jet ski right here. Mickey's windsurfing, Donald's snorkeling, which makes sense, he had his snorkel earlier. Look, Huey, Dewey, and Louie are on the trail. Looks like we forgot their bicycle. Minnie is sunbathing, of course. Did Daisy and Pluto get to come on the island or? No. Wow, what a bummer for them. They even drew the stingrays from the stingray experience. This is so cute, minus the blatant uh, omission of Daisy and Pluto, wow. This is the main family beach. As you can see, it's huge and there's tons of chairs and hammocks and things, but they do fill up quick, especially the best chairs up down by the ocean. You can also rent private cabanas on both the family beach and Serenity Bay, the adult beach. Those go incredibly quickly when your recreation windows open up. So fast, we've never been able to book one uh, because they're usually booked up by the time that we get to since it's based on your Castaway Club membership. But that's a dream of mine to have a cabana on the adult beach at Castaway. And we've just happened upon Conked Out Bar. This is the main bar here on Castaway Key here in the family section. Filled with a variety of beers and other adult beverages for you to enjoy. You're actually gonna see a lot of the staff that works the bars on the ship come out here. So if you've made friends with any bartenders, be sure to keep an eye out for them because they might be here at the Conked Out Bar during your time. I know we've pointed this out in other videos, but it's one of my favorite Easter eggs on the island is that around you're gonna see different signs for different services and they are often nods to different executives and people from the Disney company. So like here we have Kay Holes, which is Carl Holes, who used to be the president of Disney Cruise Line. He looks like he's set up a lobster business here. And then here you've got Jay Valley's Marine Services. That's for Jeff Valley, who's the current president of Walt Disney World. On the way in, you could have spotted Tomorrow Doc for Josh Tomorrow, Bob Iger's the captain. Um, so it's just a fun little Disney touch. Of course, they're gonna hide some details on the island. Made it a little bit further down the island, past the family beach. Flippers and floats right here. This is where you will pick up things like snorkel equipment or floats if you rented those. You don't have to rent them in advance. You can rent them here when you get to the island as well. It's also where you've got Olaf's Summertime Freeze, which are slushies basically, smoothies, that are available at an extra cost, featuring everyone's favorite snowman. As I mentioned earlier, the second merchandise shop here on the island is by the seashore, with a fun little pun, B-U-Y, as in you're going to purchase the seashore. Also in this location, it should be noted, we have the trams that go to Serenity Bay, the adult area, and then behind by the seashore is where you can rent bikes to ride. Now. Like Molly mentioned, we did this before and it's super fun. I enjoyed that, but let's go ahead and, <laughs> you know, I do get it, not fast. Here they have another assortment of items that are unique and limited only to Castaway Key, as well as some very specific 5K or Castaway Key 5K items. This is something that you can elect to do when you get onto the island, just go run one of the paths that is a quick little 5K. And if you want to honor your efforts, you can do so with some merchandise. Oh yeah, look at that. That's cute. That is cute. Almost worth running 5K in the heat on vacation. Mm-hmm, or perhaps you get this water bottle. Is this a, like, is this a- It's like a sweat. Like a headband situation? Okay. One final note about the characters. If you look at the app, they're not out for very long as far as like the day goes. Like they really only are out from like nine to 11. I think cause it gets pretty hot out here. And uh, you know, you don't want Mickey or Minnie to burn. That, you, that would be embarrassing for the show tonight. Also, I wanna highlight this. They have these available if you use a wheelchair. They have the beach wheelchairs here. So that's very helpful uh, for the folks that need it also. Pretty, pretty interesting to look at. So from this late night to Jenna, it is one of my biggest pieces of advice for your castaway day to get up, get off the ship, meet some characters before it gets too hot, get your spot on the beach and make the most of the day. All right, but I know that the burning question is, Molly, Alan, you've done so much at Castaway Key. What's left for you to do? You've done snorkeling, 
True. You've pet stingrays. That's also true. You've gone biking, some of us reluctantly. Parasailing even, got a great view of the ship. But today, dear friends, we are tackling the Aqua Trike. I'm literally so giddy. The Aqua Trike, featured right there, is $30 per person for half an hour of pure frivolity. I, I'm worried for you on the Aqua Trike. Okay. I think it's gonna be really hard for you. What are you trying to say? I'm trying to say it's gonna be really hard for you because I'm your partner and I am not very strong and I'm pretty sure you need to be like 50-50 and it's gonna be like 80-20. You had me in the first half, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, yeah, well, you know what? We'll make it happen. Teamwork makes a dream work. You know what? It's gonna be fun. I'm not gonna lie to you. We actually had a different excursion booked. We had a snorkeling by boat That's adventure, true. which was gonna take us out further. Um, but unfortunately it was canceled, I think because of something with the boat. Um, so they it refunded it automatically and we were looking at the list and we're like, what's something else we could do to show that we've never done before? And here we are. Aqua Trike time. All right, we've put our stuff up. No, it's not in a locker or anything. So I wouldn't leave anything too valuable in there. You know, I'm, I'm gambling. And now we are to get life jackets here. It's probably smart to keep your lanyard on your person. So you have your key to the world card and everything, but like flip flops, towels, that sort of thing, you're gonna leave on the beach. For legal reasons, you should probably bring your lanyard with your key to the world and ID with you. Make your own decisions. But for legal reasons, that's my official advice. The lifeguard told us that there might be sharks out there to look at. So now I'm really excited. And I'm gonna be really mad if we don't see a shark. If you need to think about the fact that you have to do most of the work, which side do you want to be on? Okay. You're doing so good. I'm having a good time. You're turning it all the way, aren't you? Yep. Reaction time, not real, not real fast on the aqua <laughs> There is no power steering on this vehicle. To a shark. Sharkies. Where are you? Whoa, whoa. <laughs> I feel like we are moving negative miles an hour. We are moving one one thousandth of a mile an hour. Fine. For all that effort, we didn't really move too much. Well, that's not my fault. I will say, we're a lot further from the beach than I thought we would be. You're doing great. The water's so pretty out here. Now we gotta be still to bring the sharkies to us. That person over there is doing it all on their own. That's impressive. So am I. You're doing it 80%. <laughs> that's your turn. Give it a go. How's it going? Great. You got this. Steering. I'm gonna hit people. No, you're you're good. I don't hit other people. Molly, I don't know how fast you think we're going, but they are definitely gonna have, they're definitely gonna beat us. <laughs> what do you mean that kayak's faster than me? Molly, the, the, the concern has far is long gone. Ciao, baby. I, I can't wait. Ciao, yeah. <laughs> ka ciao. My thighs hurt. Teamwork makes the dream work. We are both pedaling 50-50 right now. <laughs> Maybe it's 60-40 or 70-30, but definitely better than 80-20. Look at her, look at us just flying. We're just zooming through these waters now. Here comes a wave from the jet ski. Woo, woo. Thrilling. Like that part on uh, Incredicoaster. Uh, <laughs> look at all those sickles. Look at them. Look at all them. Mine. Mine. We did it. Yeah, I did. <laughs> Would you do it again? No. Why? I mean, listen, it's a good cardio. Enjoy biking. But. Yeah. It was fun and silly, and it's beautiful out there, very calming. Um, but yeah, I don't think it's a top choice for me as far as excursions go. I think my number one is still the snorkeling. Yeah, for sure. Where you get to snorkel. In the family beach snorkeling, if you go underwater at certain points, there's little magical surprises like a Dumbo ride vehicle or the Prince of Eric statue. statue. Yeah. 
That's definitely my favorite castaway activity we've done. What about you, besides snorkeling? Uh, meeting the rays. Ooh, the stingray class. And then parasailing, just so cool. Yeah, there's tons of different activities. You can also have a great day not spending any additional money oh. and just laying on the beach and enjoying the food. But if you're looking for a little something extra, I would recommend snorkeling or the ray experience. Or if you want a little adventure, we'll price your excursion to parasailing. But next time we come here, we'll try more activities too. For sure. Now, one thing I do want to add, I am noticing that some folks are not able to book things because they're trying to do a walk up a little bit later. It's around 11 right now. Um, so if you do want to do the aqua trike or the paddle boards or the sailboats, I would recommend booking them in advance because you might get walk up availability, but there's no guarantee. Okay, well, I think that we've earned a beverage. You definitely did. <laughs> well, we're going to go visit with Predrag at uh bar over here at the conked out bar at the conked out bar because i'm pretty conked out i'm sorry but anyway we're headed to the conked out bar to pick up a uh, one of us is headed to the conked out bar while the other one is going to do something what are you doing the ice cream machines are open oh all you can eat soft serve continues on the island All right, here is my libation. Now, they do have some signature beverages that you can get inside of the cute little coconut, Disney uh, Cruise Line coconut or bamboo sipper cups. And the conch cooler is probably the most famous one. It's like a coconut and rum frozen beverage. The Pelican Mule is good if you want to do a tropical beverage but not be too sweet. They've also got some mocktails up there as well. Shocking to know, and I wasn't really feeling a sweet or frozen drink, but I still wanted to have some tropical vibes. So this is what the wonderful bartender Rashad came up with. Um, he muddled a bunch of fresh fruit. So there's like some oranges and so I believe some pineapple, lemon, lime in there. He muddled that, put it with a little bit of vodka, shook it, and then topped it with Moe ice, which is a champagne designed for being chilled and cold. And it is phenomenal. And I picked up a beverage that was recommended by one of the other bartenders on the ship. It is beef eater gin that has been infused with strawberry tonic water and a lemon and it might not sound tropical but boy does it hit all those notes looking at all the little knickknacks around the bar of course i'm very intrigued by this world's most dangerous sharks post so we're gonna get a closer look at that in a second but i also noticed there's a literal hidden mickey up here amongst all the things if you look in this crate right there there's a like little mickey statue amongst the trinkets and treasures and there's just some johnny tsunami replicas oh my gosh World's Greatest Surfer Slash Person Awards. Right there. Wow. So it is confirmed that Grandpa Tsunami Oh. The Conked Out Bar. Is that? You heard it your first time. Are we say That's canon? Canon. All right. Headed now to get some lunch at Cookies BBQ. So Cookies and Cookies 2 are the barbecue hummingbird. Oh, wow. Let's see if I can... It's so fast. Flint, what are you doing? Got distracted by the nature. Fully understandable. Cookies and Cookies 2 are the two lunch locations here in the family section. There's also the Serenity Bay barbecue in the adult section. And they serve kind of a classic barbecue lunch. You're usually going to find burgers, hot dogs, maybe some ribs. I love the fresh fruit station right here. We're gonna have lunch at Cookies because we normally have lunch at the Serenity Bay barbecue, but wanted to check out what Cookies is like. Typically, everything you can find here is also there, but then they also zhuzh it a little bit for the adults. So they might do like um, some extra meats or some extra decadent desserts, but we're headed to Cookies. Shout out to the cast member that told us to go to the very back because there's no one in line and all the service stations are the same. All right, we got some chips and some fresh fruit. Got some slaw, potato salad, street sweet corn salad and macaroni salad and over here we've got barbecue beef brisket flame grilled hamburgers hot dogs they also have impossible burgers upon request if you're a plant-based eater they've also got uh cajun spiced rotisserie chicken ribs and some more accoutrement like beans and corn and to round things out some sweet treats including a lemon raspberry crumble loaf texas cornbread brownies and cookies pro tip grab a couple cookies make yourself an ice cream sandwich with a soft serve I love this fruit station. They're literally carving it up right here. You've got all kinds of melon and apples and oranges. They've also got soda machines out here. So if you want any kind of Coke products, they've got that along with water and such. That is one thing that is pretty unique about Disney Cruise Line. Most cruises, if you want soda, you have to pay extra, but it's included not only on the island, but on the ship as well. 
We found some shaded, uncrowding seating under the Pops Props sign right here. And I just want to point out these more of these Easter eggs. This boat is called the John Henge. That's the Imagineer that designed the castle. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Amongst many other buildings, he was an architectural genius. He also designed Space Mountain, Spaceship Earth, um, Icon. And then you've also got Sklar's Hunky Dory. That's that boat. That'd be a nod to Marty Sklar, another legendary Imagineer who did many, many things with the Disney Company, but probably most notably, um, Epcot. You may have heard of it before. Burger. Okay. Corn sauce is really good. That's all good. <laughs> Now to confirm Swifty. It's a big brain idea. The trick is letting the cookie sit out while you're eating so it gets warmed up in the sun. And then it's like a gooey gooey chocolate chip cookie with your favorite flavor of ice cream in it. An icon. Mount Rustmore. Welcome back. We're headed back aboard the Disney Dream. Got a little t-shirt purchase, uh, but a little fun factoid. You may think that the ship is black because that is Mickey's colors because the, the style of the ships mimic Mickey's iconic outfit, um, but it can't be black because of maritime rules. Black is usually reserved for ships that are the bad kind of pirates. Um, so they were in a meeting and they were trying to figure out what they could do for Mickey's outfit. And a, an Imagineer came in named Monica and she was wearing this very dark blue, almost like navy uh, sweater. And everyone was like, we could make it that color and everyone will assume it's black, but it's not actually black. So they call this color that they paint the base of the Disney cruise ships, Monica Blue. Huh, that is interesting. Probably more interesting to people who can see colors, right? But interesting nonetheless. Hello again. We have been back on the dream for a little bit. Had some time in the rainforest room, which is especially lovely on Castaway Day because the whirlpools overlook the island and it's gorgeous. Had a little refuel with Flo. Yeah. Gotta get those tendies. And now it's time for our final tasting of the cruise, the very popular martini tasting. So let's go. That's right, this is time for our final tasting class of our cruise. We've done old fashioned, we've done tequila and margarita, and now today we are doing martini. Now. We found out that our instructor from our first class, the old fashioned tasting class, was teaching our martini class and because he was so great, we wanted to see if we could find him again and we were able to find two spots for the martini tasting class and I'm excited to take it. Now this class is $50 per person and is going to teach you all of the wonderful intricacies of the world of martinis. This class is hosted in the Meridian Lounge, which is the very fancy lounge between Palo and Remy and is a fantastic spot to come grab a pre-dinner drink because it has such an amazing view. Lemon drops and lemon sweet. 
But the peak of the uh, uh, good, the citron vodka is still there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But this was like more, more of a cure, uh, more on like, like a sour side, She's but that too sweet. Well, that was a blast. I love these classes so much, and they've been such a great time on the ship, especially because Nora, who's been the uh, cast member leading a couple of our classes, they've been really hands-on. It's been incredible. We learned how to make, in order, Molly, keep track, the lemon drop. Yes. The cosmopolitan. I'm Samantha. The Washington apple. Yes. And Nora's signature drink, the wedding cake. And we've shared those recipes on screen, so screenshot those if you'd like to make them the way Nora does. He stressed the emphasis on fresh squeezed juice. Always go with fresh very important but if you like a particular kind of alcohol or a particular kind of drink i highly recommend doing these classes additionally if you can do it on like your castaway day you only have to cut your castaway time a little bit short and it's going to be a much smaller class Nora told us that yesterday his martini class had over 20 yeah people. over 20 people in it but today there were only six because it was on castaway day so he was able to customize the different martinis and it was much more hands-on and much more personalized it also gave you a lot of time to ask questions of the bartender and instructor to be able to understand like why the drink is made that way if you want to alter to your preferences, it's just such a unique time. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure we sailed away at 4.45 today. The class was at 4, so you'd only need to get on a little bit early. Um, but that's kind of a pro tip. If you want to take a class and it's not available, check on one of the port days, especially the castaway port day. Uh, but for now, we need to go get dressed because there's a show to be seen. There is. Give us a second. And tonight we are headed to Believe, which is another montage show here on the Disney Dream. Now, much like the Golden Mickeys, this is a montage show and there is no filming wall inside the Walt Disney Theater, so we are going to meet you once the show is done. But I'm really excited for this. I really enjoyed the show based on what I can remember from the last time we went on the Dream. Molly? Are you pumped? I love a montage show. I love a variety of characters and music, and I'm sure that I will cry. <sighs> I'm sure of that too. But this time, I will also be right next to you, weeping openly. How was it? Do not see that show if you have any kind of dad issues. <laughs> I am unwell. It's really good. It's a great show. An excellent medley situation. What do you think? I can't. So for the rest of this evening, what we have planned is... See that show? That's my favorite show. I think that's my favorite show I've seen on any Disney cruise ship. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, I love Believe. It's so good. It's very good. <laughs> I think for the rest of the evening, we're going to go do a bit of shopping. Yes, I need to pick up some of that 2024 collection that is so bright and colorful. And uh, then we have dinner pretty soon. We do. So. <laughs> we have asked. Yeah. Headed downstairs to dinner, but look how cute the ironwork is here. You've got Mickey and Minnie, and that one's Donald. Who's right here? Pluto, adorable. Here's Goof, and I'm guessing this is Daisy? Yes, it is. Wait, is that Minnie again? That makes no sense. Minnie literally gets two and Daisy gets zero. Okay. Anyway, we're headed to Enchanted Garden, which is the third of our rotational dining experiences aboard the Disney Dream. Again, rotational dining is the normal dining that is set up for anyone sailing aboard the ships. Your servers are going to rotate with you. Enchanted Garden has, of course, a garden theme. I'm excited to enjoy this one. There's some dishes that are well talked about in the Disney Cruise Line fandom. Um, and as always, we are not going to film as we're eating to be courteous to the other guests around us. So we'll see you in a minute, but we're going to take copious notes and some B-roll, and we'll be right back. Enchanted Garden makes it feel like you're dining in, surprise, a garden. And there's beautiful touches of greenery and flowers everywhere. Everywhere. I love the little Disney touches of the Mickey Cupid fountain and the Alice in Wonderland flowers on the menu. And speaking of the menu, you're going to see a lot of light, bright things to go with the theme. Appetizers, you've got things like a cucumber garden roll and North Atlantic lobster ravioli. You've also got soups and salads, such as a cream of asparagus soup and a spinach and raspberry salad. As far as the mains go, you've got a variety of dishes, including caramelized sea scallops, a seared pork tenderloin medallion, slow roasted prime rib, and then of course you've got some of those lighter offerings like a harissa lamb salad or vegetarian offerings like a pearl barley cakes with shallots, leeks, and rosemary. First up was the bread service. This was multigrain and country current rolls with a chickpea garlic puree. The bread was heartier 
And the chickpea and garlic puree was kind of like hummus, but just a bit thicker, had some nice garlic flavor. For starters, I went with the applewood smoked bacon wild mushroom tart with creamy leeks. Now y'all, this is basically a baby quiche. It's got the puff pastry, and then the bacon and mushroom is actually with egg to create essentially a quiche, which I really enjoyed because I like quiche. It was a little bit drier, and I could have used a little bit more of the mushroom flavor, but overall, a pretty solid starter. And I picked up the ahi tuna and avocado tower with crispy noodles and wasabi dressing. This was good quality tuna. It tasted very fresh. It is a raw dish, so if that if you are averse to that, this probably isn't for you. The wasabi added a little bit of spice, and the crispy noodles added a nice texture change with the crunch. I really enjoyed this dish in particular. Now, our server also brought us over a surprise, which was the cucumber garden roll. This was filled with julienne carrots, bell peppers, and zucchini with cilantro and dressed with a white shoyu and lemon dressing. This was just a very light, bright, and refreshing, very fresh, vegetable-based dish that I really enjoyed. For entrees, I decided to mix it up from what I'd normally order and go for the pan-seared sea bass, which is highly recommended and a Disney Cruise Line favorite. It's served with a fava bean and pea risotto, sliced fennel, and a dill chive Riesling wine sauce. And y'all, as someone who doesn't normally order seafood, this is divine. I cannot recommend it enough. The fish is light and flaky, falls apart easily, not super fishy tasting or super salty tasting. I like the herbaceousness of the dill chive wine sauce and the little crunch from the fennel. The risotto was delicious as well. Not super pea flavored. Um, I could taste more of that fava bean. Overall, this is a delicious dish and my favorite dish that I had in a regular sit down uh, one of the rotational dining restaurants. And I got this slow roasted prime rib, carved and served with thyme roasted vegetables, double baked potato, natural jus, and horseradish. The prime rib was cooked pretty well, and I think that it was a decent cut of meat. It wasn't my favorite cut of meat I had on the regular rotational dining, but I have to say I love pairing with that jus and horseradish that spiced it up just enough and added a little bit of moisture that really elevated the overall dish for me. The vegetables were cooked nicely. They were nicely roasted. The thyme added a good bit of flavor to it. And listen, I'm never going to turn down a double baked potato. Now for the dessert menu, it starts with a number of specialty beverages, including coffee, as well as alcoholic and non-alcoholic beverages. And looking at the dessert menu, they have wonderful things like warm sticky date pudding and the orange almond cake. They also have their signature dessert, which is the Southern style pecan tart. I picked up the chocolate brownie sundae with peanut butter brownie bites with rich chocolate ice cream whipped cream, and chocolate fudge sauce. And this was a chocolate sundae. I love that they added the addition of some of the peanut butter bites because chocolate and peanut butter is one of the best combinations in my mind. And while this wasn't the most unique dessert, it was one that did bring me back to my childhood. So I appreciated it for that. And I grabbed that signature dessert, the Southern style pecan tart with caramel sauce. This was incredibly sweet, which you know is not my favorite kind of dessert, but it's flavored really well. You've got some crunch from the pecans, you've got the kind of shortbread flavoring from the crust there, and then you've got this very sweet caramel sauce and caramel mixture that's in with the pecans. I enjoyed it, but it was definitely something I would need to share. Overall, I really enjoy the Enchanted Garden, and I think it's my favorite of the rotational dining restaurants aboard the Disney Dream. Also, friendly reminder, this was our final night, so this is when you're going to want to tip your servers, including your head server and assistant server. We opt to do the prepaid gratuities when you're booking the cruise, which pre-does your gratuities for the folks in the dining room as well as your room steward. Then on the last night of the cruise, they bring you a perforated sheet with all the tip information. You tear those up and put them into envelopes and give them to your servers yourself. They do give you the opportunity to tip on a form if you don't do the prepaid gratuities, but I do find it easier to do it that way. Also note, if you are paying for something extra on board, like Remy, Palo, or drinks, they are going to give you a receipt and you can tip on your C-Pass, which is connected to the credit card you used at booking. Just wrapped dinner at Enchanted Garden, and we are headed to the atrium for the See You Real Soon Goodbye Party. This is a cute little farewell they do on all the Disney cruises, but... It is kind of a secret that part of it is actually a character palooza with one last chance to meet your favorite character. So make sure you get there a little bit early and they're not going to maybe do full meet and greets with photo pass and autographs and all the thing. But if you go quickly, you can meet a couple characters and uh, get a final photo. Hey, it's me, Dream, and welcome to the heart of our beautiful ship, our lobby atrium. I'm Jenny, your entertainment manager, and I'm going to raise your hand in the air and give a royal wave to our Disney royalty.
Well, another cruise done. Ended with a character palooza. We saw six characters, which is the most we've ever seen. So if you are headed on a Disney cruise, make sure at the end of the night you're ready for that character palooza. It's not a long meet and greet. It's not autographs. It's not a million pictures. It's no photo pass, but snag those selfies and uh, say goodbye to your friends, which is very depressing when you think about it. But as depressing as that is, there are so many great things about sailing on a Disney ship in general. I mean, there's just so much that sets this cruise line apart from the rest I know that we've seen. What do you think is your favorite bit? I think in general, when it comes to Disney Cruise Line, there's no topping the dining. Uh, we went on a not Disney cruise with some friends earlier this year just for fun. And I think we've taken for granted how good just Disney food is. <laughs> Everything from like the quick service food, like the burgers and chicken tenders, all the way up to your signature dining. Disney really does food really well. And the cast members are so wonderful across the board, just wanting to make sure you have an excellent experience. And of course, it's really tough to think about Disney in any regard without thinking about entertainment. The shows, the characters, and the cast, I kind of lump those all together, are just impeccable throughout this. Uh, specifically here on The Dream, the stage shows are, are phenomenal, and it was just great to come and pop in and see those. We saw two out of three when we were on this cruise. They were both amazing. Um, it's just, Disney is synonymous with entertainment, and they do it better than anybody else can't compete with that. And I have to say, I love Castaway Key. Castaway Key is such a beautiful island. There's so many fun options to do for your excursion, or you can just lay on the beach, get some soft serve, get a cocktail. Um, and as wonderful as Castaway is, I'm very excited to see Disney's new island, which launches in a couple of months. Lighthouse Point at Lookout K. Lookout Point at Lighthouse K. You know what? The name is a little hazy. Disney's lookout point at lighthouse k we're gonna keep working on it we'll get through it i'll more. get through it by the time i get to the island <laughs> yeah you know what when this comes out though we'll have it on yeah we'll and uh, we'll bring you with us the first time we go to that island uh which excited to see what disney does with that as well but it's it's hard to be cast away it's yeah it's an incredible island a great relaxing experience for either the whole family or for you adults out there there is a spot dedicated for you and and the characters have new costumes which is so cute so thinking of the dream specifically what were some of your highlights of this cruise i think what sets the dream apart for me is that the adult pool area is so much larger than the other two ships i've sailed on so i've had the opportunity to sail on the magic and the wish outside of this uh and then on both of those other two ships the adult pool area was smaller than what you have here on the dream uh, with it being multiple levels, a couple of bars for you to have access to, and multiple pool sections for you to relax with. It's just so much more space for you to have as an adult and a dedicated area to relax and luxuriate. I think it really sets the dream apart for, for me specifically. What about you? I think kind of plussing that, the rainforest room on this ship, I think is my favorite rainforest room I've been to. I know that's kind of a very niche specific add-on for some folks but as someone who really looks forward to the uh, the rainforest room it's kind of my favorite splurge of going on a disney cruise i like the space on this one i like that the whirlpools overlook the island i could just live in those tile chairs um so kind of just as a bonus add-on i think the rainforest room is the best on the dream versus the other two and i also got to say that i know that i'm a little bit biased because this is the first and only time in my life i've, I've ever experienced remy dining mm. the opportunity to dine at remy here on the disney dream was incredible i get it it's a niche experience it's a very expensive experience uh that is dedicated for foodies but as somebody who loves food and eating and and, and enjoying that type of thing um it was, it was indescribable for me. I really loved the opportunity to, to enjoy that. Um, so that sets the dream apart for me. And of course, obviously, as with every Disney cruise, there's Palo. Oh, you can't talk about Remy without talking about Palo. I think one of the best dining experiences I've had on planet Earth. Um, and we're lucky that Palo exists on, on I think, all of the cruise ships. Um, but Palo Brunch will always be a highlight for me, no matter what Disney cruise I'm on. Um, but kind of... Continuing that thread with the dining, I have to say the bar classes this time were Ooh, so yeah. fun. We had some awesome instructors this time, and they were really more hands-on than other classes I've taken. And I don't know if that's just the instructors we had or just the fact that we lucked into some smaller classes, but the fact that we actually got to make the cocktails was a really fun add-on, and it plussed up kind of my favorite extracurricular on the cruise as well. And by we, of course, I want you to be very clear here. 
Molly got to really flex her bartending muscle. Which is She's very good at it. Not And good. should, in my eyes, take over all bartending duties henceforth and into the future. That means you have to drink cocktails I make. That I will not partake in, but will also <laughs> enjoy uh, in watching her create. Switching gears from cocktails, kind of a more family-friendly uh, activity. I love Midship Detective Agency. Oh, yeah. I think Midship Detective Agency is more fun than the game Aboard the Wish. I don't really care for using your phone. Um, I prefer having the physical card, and I like going up to the Enchanted Art, which is awesome on its own, and seeing that kind of unfold before you. So I cannot recommend doing Midship enough. Either play it the whole way through or just play it a little bit. I think that is such a fun onboard activity on this ship. And lastly, uh, we stayed in a different style stateroom this time. We actually got some questions and DMs on Instagram because um, we stayed in an inside room this time on the Dream as opposed to we um, often book the veranda room, um, kind of what the room was like. And I have to say, the little touches of magic outside the window are wonderful. They are interesting. I, I think that for me... It's interesting to not have the natural light come in during the day. That is, there is something to be said for that. But the actual, at least on the dream, right? Live view camera outside of the ship, along with, as Molly mentioned, the touches of magic are really cool. But, and there is a but here. If there's only two of you staying in an inside room like this, I think that's A-OK -okay and just fine. Any more than two though, you're going to be on top of one another and in a very almost claustrophobic space. So that's just something to, to be aware adults. of. adults. I feel like you could put a kid on this and it'd be okay. You could probably put a kid on that. Any, any more than two adults and like maybe one kid in a room yeah. gets gets pretty crowded pretty quick. Um, so that's just something to be aware of in terms of the limited amount of space you have in this area in this room. So just something to keep in mind when you're booking a cruise like this and considering an inside room. I, I do think I missed the brand, especially today when we did our... Uh, breakfast delivery and we didn't have like I love sitting on the balcony and having my coffee which is just a moment of luxuriation I enjoy that said if you're looking at an inside room um because these are usually the the less expensive rooms I don't think I felt claustrophobic or like I missed the balcony but a good thing you could do is if you've got a bigger group and you're looking at an inside room jump on discord talk to the ma'am fam oh, yeah. um because we have folks that have experienced all different levels of room and they can give you real life experience of what it's like to have four people in one of these rooms or things like that because obviously we can only speak from our experience as, as two adults in one of these rooms. But uh, no Disney cruise would be anywhere near as wonderful as it is without cast members. And we took notes, copious notes, of cast members who were incredible throughout our cruise and want to use this time to shout out those cast members for their excellent work uh, in going above and beyond and creating a, a wonderful, wonderful experience for us. So here they are. First up in the dining rooms, the rotational dining, we had a wonderful team. We had Wynn as our server and Atish as his assistant server. They were so lovely. Um, and then there was also Dee, who is the head server, who I especially loved because she was the first female head server I've ever seen on a Disney cruise. And that really meant a lot. In terms of the bar staff that we had and some of the teachers that we had, we had Noor, who was a teacher for many of our classes here on the Dream. Absolutely incredible. Um, very funny, and uh, I found I had a lot of very similar tastes in beverages to Noor. And another is Nicola, who actually recognized Molly and I from a cruise we went on when Mammoth Club was still is a little bebe a, mammoth. A bebe. A bebe Just mammoth. A, a wee little pachyderm. Years ago, and actually called us out and said, hey, don't I know you guys? Um, and it was cool to reconnect with him. Incredible bartender over at the, uh, at the adult pool bar area. Great to see him again. Speaking of uh, wonderful cast members we've seen before, uh, Marie recognized us from being on the Disney Wish. She transferred over to the Dream. She was wonderful at the Bayou, and now she was at the District. Um, so we, she popped into the and she was like, do you remember from the Wish? We're like, oh my God, you remember us? And it just, it made us feel all warm and fuzzy. Another is Eric. Eric is our room attendant, did an excellent job keeping this space clean, despite the absolute tornado that we are in our room. Um, he was wonderful. We got to actually sit down and chat with him for a bit. Eric did an incredible job, and we were lucky to have him as our attendant. He's a master of the towel art. He is. Uh, we asked him what his favorite was. He said, um, Davy Jones. The Davy Jones, ah. For which Pirate, right? I also connect with him on that. Mm -hmm. And then last, but certainly not least, we have the trio of folks who helped us when we were at Remy, and that is Roberto, who was our main server, 
John Bosco, which came in to aid us in uh, what I think is perhaps Molly's favorite course of food ever served. And the then... Cheese. <laughs> the cheese. John Bosco said he loved cheese. I got you. He brought over... Uh, he wheeled over just a cart of French cheese and was like, please, let me... He said, he said, do you have any preferences? And I said, John Bosco, I am in your hands. For the first time, we said no. I said, I trust you. And he made me the most decadent and delicious cheese plate. So thank you to him. And then lastly, Louis, who was our sommelier while we were there for, for, at Remy. Um, and I think if we had asked Louis, we would have chatted about wine with him for hours. Yeah. And I was tempted to do so because boy, did he know a lot. And for someone like me who does not know much about anything, uh, I really wanted to pick his brain. But they were an incredible uh, crew to have at Remy, which is an incredible experience in general, but they were awesome and helped add to that too. And I, I know we've said it before, but just want to say it again. To echo everything, Disney Cruise Line is the pinnacle of service. It's the creme de la creme, and uh, the cast members truly, truly make these these experiences um, all the better. So big thank you to, to all the cast members. But that brings us to an end hmm. of our time here on the Disney Dream. Tomorrow we will get off at the wee hour of the morning and head back home. But... I don't know. This was just a great time. I'm happy to be able to have covered this end to end in full this time. Me too. I really enjoyed the Disney Dream. I know this is a lot of people's favorite ships or this favorite class of ships, and I can certainly see why. Um, I think if you've never been on a Disney cruise before, the Dream or the Fantasy is probably a great place to start because it's a little grander than the Magic or the Wonder, but it's not quite as overwhelming yeah. as as the Wish. Um, it's pretty much a, a perfect kind of balance of everything. So I, I think the Dream is a wonderful ship. Couldn't agree more. But. Until next time, dear friends, please be sure to like this video, subscribe if you are new, follow us on all of our socials, and if you want to join me the man fam in the conversation about this or any of our other videos, please join us on Discord. We'd love to have you. The links for all that are down below. And until next time, friends, I'm Molly. And I'm Al. And it's been so magical. It has been. Good night. Bye. we up so early. So early. Uh, I wonder who else is going to come out the window. Maybe a heffalump. Or a woozle. It's very confusing. Mm.